Welcome to the B-side for April 2018. In this video, I am going to tell you about the albums I heard this month that I liked, as well as talk about the records that came in. And there's a lot of them, so stick around. For this video, we don't have the mic, so if it sounds a little off, I apologize, but it's still going to be a rad video. First album that came out this month that I'm excited for is Eels, The Deconstruction. Eels been around for a very long time. I didn't love the last Eels album, as I mentioned. Didn't know what to expect. I gotta say, I enjoyed this album. Wasn't mind-blowing, wasn't a contender for album of the year, but it was a solid addition to the Eels repertoire. I think it's a great album lyrically. It really shows where E's at in his life, and I can't relate to that because he's much older than I am. However, I love the raw lyricism and the music behind it is excellent. Definitely recommend listening to it. A Perfect Circle, Eat the Elephant. I am a casual A Perfect Circle fan. I've been reading reviews of this record and it's kind of split right down the middle. Some people love it, some say it sounds terrible compared to the previous releases. For me, on one listen, I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed the experimental orchestral nature of it. I thought it would have a little more edge to it based on Maynard's usual projects, having a little more grit, like Tool of course. But this album was a really nice listen. The songs were catchy. Not all of them were amazing, but the ones that were were really, really good and begged to be repeated. So I'm gonna give it some more listens. I think it's gonna grow on me, but overall, pretty impressed. And then Goldmund Ocasis. This was a solid modern classical ambient record. It didn't break any new ground. It didn't do anything that other records haven't done before, but it was a worthy listen and a worthy addition to my ambient collection. I really love all of the stuff that Keith Kniff does. He's super talented. I might like the Helios Project a little more because it has a little more interesting melody to it. It's not quite as traditional as Goldmund, but this was a great Goldmund album, as they all are. And sadly, Janelle Monae's album did not come out before this video. So. Hopefully I like it in a couple days. All right, I got a lot of records in this month. A lot of them, so let's go through them. Starting off, as I mentioned, Vinyl Digital did me good this month. They are one of my favorite labels overseas. They're a distro, so they have a lot of records in stock that aren't just their own, but they also press a lot of exclusive records for the lo-fi, hip-hop, beat tape community, and they're all really good, and I want to get them all, but I restrain myself. Couldn't resist with these, though. Flamingosis, Bright. Moments. This is a really good kind of future funky hip hop -y album. I love everything that Flamingosis has done. I think that Great Hair is his best release, but this is a great one and honestly I'm bummed that I didn't get the colored version. It goes for quite a pretty penny now, but I'm glad to own it in some capacity. The Cancel, Night Light. This is a very good hip hop beat tape. Um, I really like everything that Cancel's doing. He has a ton of albums, I think a bunch of EPs with it too. Not everything's on vinyl, but that's starting to change and I'm seeing some stuff pop up on crates and you know, of course, the vinyl digital exclusive. So keep an eye on the Cancel if you like hip hop beat stuff. It's on really nice blue translucent vinyl. So nice little touch there. I believe limited to 300 copies, which is very low and I'm shocked it's not sold out yet, unless it is already, um, and I haven't realized. And then we have Fla.Mingo. 05. This is not Flamingosis. Although they're both great artists that have dipped their toe into the vaporwave scene while also staying true to their other genre. It's just on black vinyl, but it is a great album and I definitely recommend it. And finally, look at this cute guy. This is Lime's Fresh Squeeze. Look at him, he's just resting over there with that lime, drinking on the beach. And of course, this one had to be on colored vinyl because it is on, can you guess it? More of an emerald color, but still much appreciated. I love the green aesthetic mixed in with the beige. And this is another good hip hop lo-fi tape and I really enjoyed every song on it. So if you like those study album playlists that are popular on YouTube that are like music listen to when you're studying, music listen to when you're doing homework, that is a genre now called lo-fi hip hop or beat tapes. And it's really good and there's a lot of artists in it. Much like Vaporwave, it's expanding very quickly. There's new albums dropping all the time. Not all of them are getting the vinyl treatment and Vinyl Digital is making sure that some of the best ones are getting vinyl treatment. So good job to you guys. This was an incredibly well done release. So the Proto Men is a group that you may have heard of. They are inspired by Mega Man, because Proto Man is a character in Mega Man. And this is the Act 2 of their Proto Man project. So Act 1 was a little more abrasive and aggressive. It followed the story of some of the robots that Mega Man fought. Really interesting album, but Act 2, it blew me out of the water when I first heard it. This is by all means, a rock opera. There are ups and downs and theatrical moments and moments that sound like Bruce Springsteen, specifically the song Breaking Out, which is my favorite song on the album. And they decided to do a massive deluxe 
vinyl edition of it, as well it should be. It follows the story of Dr. Light and Dr. Wily, um, which is, of course, the scientist that created Mega Man and Proto Man and all that stuff in the game lore. And it's a really interesting thing for non-Mega Man fans and Mega Man fans alike. Uh, it has, you know, two discs and then a bunch of really nice pages with some, some letters inside that are a nice touch to keep building the lore of the story behind the album. Uh, I love this. This was, oh, and of course, don't forget, this beautiful, crazy pop-up of the city. Uh, this is just such a gorgeous love letter to vinyl, to the, the band, to the game series. I, I think this was incredibly done, and the book is, is hardcover and, and bound really nicely, and, and the colors on it, everything about this, it's still on sale, I believe. I'll link to it in the description. This is a really solid release, and if you're a fan of the Proto Men at all and you don't own this, you need to probably fix that immediately. If you're not a fan of the Proto Men, Listen to Breaking Out, that might win you over. I forgot to talk about this during the Record Store Day video, but I got this little cute port. I love that Disney Music Emporium is coming out with all of these shaped picture discs. They're so ridiculous in the best way. The Baby Groot one was great, I love the BB-8 one, and now we have a little Porg. So if you want a Porg of your own, you could have gotten on Record Store Day, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but come on, how can you not like the Porgs? They're adorable. Materia Collective is killing it right now on the video game soundtrack front, and this is not a soundtrack, but it is inspired by the music of Zelda. Rosen has created Sins of Hyrule. This album is beautiful. If you're a Zelda fan and you love the music from that, he took the music and interpreted it in such unique ways. These are original arrangements, all inspired by the original tracks that are so ingrained in our memory as Zelda fans. And this is such a great pressing of it. It's a big gatefold. The gatefold itself has the Triforce in the middle and double disc. Every aspect of this release was a knockout. And I had to grab it when I saw the concept and I heard one of the tracks. I was like, all right, I got this is this is amazing. And he's actually releasing a follow-up to this that's coming out soon. I'll hopefully get that and show it off as well. That one's gonna be a little more of the peaceful, prettier songs. This one's pretty epic. You got things like inspired by Gerudo Valley and all the songs that we know and, and remember, but he did his own arrangements of them and they're amazing. So Sins of Hyrule, I believe this is sold out now, unfortunately, but awesome release. Finally got in the Imogen Heap Speak For Yourself Clear Vinyl Edition, the real limited version from Intricate Industries. I talked about in the last video my thoughts on the label. I'm still kind of annoyed at how they did that rollout. But I will say in their defense, this is a pretty phenomenal sound and pressing. I listened to the whole album the other day and it's just, it has a lot of punch, it sounds fantastic on vinyl. So they really did a great job at the mastering. And as I mentioned, I did get the clear vinyl version. Um, so if you guys like Imogen Heap, or if you don't know her, this whole album is a pop masterpiece. And you probably know Hide and Seek from either the OC days or just the memes because it became a meme of a song. It's a beautiful song, and the whole album is really, really good. Like, every song could have been a single, so I highly recommend checking out this album. Maybe not supporting the label, but checking out the album. I have to hold this here, or the fake Obi strip type things gonna fall off, but this is the Katamari Damacy soundtrack by Mondo. I'll take this off now. This was such a well done release as well. Mondo knew that this was something people wanted, and they didn't just squander the opportunity to press it. They made it so beautiful. This image is so iconic for anyone that played the game. The, I think it's called the, the King of Everything, and then your little dude down there with his Katamari ball. And the discs themselves are, are really cool too. And the inner sleeves, inner sleeves are made up of junk like it's an actual Katamari ball, which was such a cool touch. I love that. So this one was green and purple, and the other one is red and white. So yeah, these little hazy swirls, really nice design, and I forgot how damn good this soundtrack is. It's not just a nostalgic video game buy. This soundtrack holds its own as a J-pop inspired video game, bossa nova, masterpiece hybrid. I, yeah, this is just, if you didn't buy this, I hope they do a repress because this is essential listening for gamers and non-gamers alike. Can you believe it? After months and months and months and months and months of talking about it, The Endless by Frank Ocean finally showed up on my doorstep. I've not opened yet because I have heard some reviews that it doesn't sound very good. If it doesn't sound good, I'm probably not going to open it. So let me know if you've listened to it, if the pressing is good, or if it's just people that have Crosleys that are complaining that it sounds bad because they have bad equipment. I don't know. So I'm just happy it's here. It's an awesome little album, and I love all the foil treatments they did for the cover. This rainbow foil is a really nice touch. More jackets should do rainbow foil. I know it's not cheap, but 
don't skimp. I'm sure you guys saw that it was my birthday recently. I did a video where I give away a record and I talked about my Patreon that I just redid. So if you haven't checked that out, there's a link in the description. But I also said I would do a birthday haul if anyone sent me something to my new P.O. box, which a couple people did. So I'm going to show off what Mark and Ryan have got me for my birthday. And I'm going to open them. I don't really know what... Well, I kind of know what Mark's is. I'll show you why. So Mark's came in an Amazon box, and one of them was just loose and was not in a mailer, so I saw it before I could unbox it. But it's Bonobo Black Sands. I love Bonobo, one of my favorite modern electronic artists. I don't own this. So, awesome. Good job, Mark. And he also got me a second record. The generosity there is out of control. So let's open this and see what it is. I've, I've refrained looking on the side to see what it is, just because I want to be surprised. Oh, nice! Mad Season live at the Moor. Someone watches my videos. Mad Season is the kind of super group that consists of Lane Staley from Alice in Chains, Mike McCready from, of course, like everything, Pearl Jam and whatnot, as well as some of the Screaming Trees people, Barrett Martin and Mark Lonigan and some stuff. And this is a concert they did live at the Moor uh, in 1995. Uh, this was produced by Mike McCready and Barrett Martin. Awesome! I bet this sounds super good on vinyl. There weren't that many Mad Season concerts because it was a short-lived thing, unfortunately because of Lane Staley's untimely death. So I'm really excited to hear what this sounds like. Uh, I've actually never heard this concert, but I love Mad Season, so nice buy. And then Ryan got me something from Temporary Residence Limited. I don't know what this is. As you guys know, I did a mystery box unboxing recently from Temporary Residence. I do enjoy that label quite a bit. So, uh, let's find out what he picked for me. I hope I don't own it. I might. I don't know. This is a gamble, Ryan. This is a 7-inch from Grails. Grails is a really good band. I don't own any of their records. It's kind of post-rocky, a little heavier though, um, a little psychedelic too, which is cool. Not a lot of post-rock delves into the psychedelic realm, but Grails does. I don't know these songs, so I'm really excited to hear them, and it looks like there's also uh, some Grails uh, guitar picks, which is really cool. I wonder if they just threw those in there. Rad. All right, what's under here? Okay, Water, History of the Future. I read about this. Okay, Water, History of the Future. This is a, a super group within the Temporary Residence family, so it's a member of Grails, um, Strike City, Tortoise, another good post-rock band, and Slint, which is another classic, really good post-rocky band. Um, oh, a whole bunch of other people have featured on it. Rachel's is on, is apparently on here. Rachel Grimes, amazing pianist, great piano-based post-rock type stuff. This is probably a great album. Uh, this must be the new one. I know they had an album a couple years ago that I heard some of. Have not heard this. Really excited. It says colored vinyl too. Nice. And Grails. Uh, looks like we got the LP. Is this their newest LP? It does not say. I'm assuming it is. It's what the picks are from. Chalice Hymnal. Uh, yeah, this is really sweet. I've wanted to add some grails to my collection. I've never actually took the plunge, so thank you, Ryan. I'm gonna listen to this ASAP and let you know what I think. Very kind of both of them to send me stuff for my birthday. If you're interested in sending me a record, I do have a P.O. Box now. I'm gonna put that in the description. Feel free to send me a record anytime. Leave a little note with it if you want. I will talk about it in a video and it'll be awesome. All right, guys, that was the B-side for April. I'll be back real soon with the A-side for May, talking about some more excellent albums coming out and coming in. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel, and I'll do more videos real soon, so look forward to that.